Next time you're late for work, it's worth remembering that nothing, that nothing gets in the way of a land rover. Welcome to Hoobies Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And this is my latest purchase. Uh, yes, yes, it is my latest purchase. It is a 2017 Land Rover Range Rover Evoque convertible. They only made these for two years because they were terrible sellers, partially because of the original sticker price. This with options could be $70,000 when it was new for something powered with a four cylinder turbo two liter uh, that shared with the Ford Fusion 246 horsepower. But it's the last convertible to be offered from Land Rover and obviously it was such a failure that they will probably never do it again unless it's some special Defender where they have it where the roof comes off in some way. But I even doubt that they will do that. So this might be the last off-road convertible from Land Rover that we will ever see. And they went out with, uh, well, an interesting bang here. And I bought this one for very cheap. It was the cheapest in the USA for a little over $20,000. Now that might sound like a lot, but like I said, despite its basic Ford underpinnings, this was a very expensive vehicle new, but Five door evokes the normal four door ones uh, do sell really cheaply in the low teens. It's very easy to find one, but not the convertibles. They have sort of a cult following. And if you look on Auto Tempest, and thanks to Auto Tempest for sponsoring today's video, you won't find one for under $30,000. There's just sort of a following for these to cruise around in Miami Beach, where I got this car from, or California, or anywhere. And look like Barbie and Ken doing it. So most of them are mid 30s going up into the 40s, almost $50,000, which is pretty darn good for a vehicle seven to eight years old. And it's very easy to see this on Auto Tempest because it combines all the major listing sites into one search. So if you're searching for a Land Rover Evoque convertible, you can specify an Evoque with a convertible top, just like you would on a major listing site, except it combines all of them into one search. It makes it very, very easy. I'm on their everyday search for used cars and find things like this. You can even search for things like Lemon Law, which this car is. I'll get to that in a little bit by color or option or whatever you want. So if you're searching for an obscure car and you want to cast a really wide net and not have to put the same inputs in different websites, Auto Tempest is the place to be. Same if you're searching for a more common generic vehicle and you want to find the best deal, Auto Tempest is the way to go. So use Auto Tempest as I do every day. It is linked below and tell your friends about Auto Tempest that they're shopping for a used car. Let them know when they start that search, Auto Tempest is the first place to go since they sponsor Hoobies Garage and Car Trek. They are very generous to YouTube content. So please remember to suggest Auto Tempest to your friends and use it as much as possible like I do. So a little over $20,000 is very, very cheap for one of these. The cheapest in the USA by many thousands, but that's because of this car's history, which is kind of BS. So this might be the very first car that I bought on this channel. That is a Lemon Law buyback. So back when this Range Rover was new, it was bought back by Land Rover because of some issue that was recurring or they couldn't fix. And this happens more often than you think. In the case of this Range Rover, I was told by the previous owner, the reason for the Lemon Law buyback was because of the rear hatch. It had failed, it would not open or do whatever, and the latch was exclusive to the Evoke convertibles. They couldn't get the part in a timely manner, so they Lemon Lawed the car, they bought it back. Even though it was an easily fixable problem, they just couldn't source the parts for it, which sounds crazy, but that gives it a big deal when it comes to the car's history and resale. It's not a salvage title. It's not some theft car. It is a Lemon Law buyback for that reason. And it is very common on Land Rovers and European makes. Most of the time it's not because they couldn't get a part, but because of a recurring issue that they couldn't figure out and the owner gets frustrated and the manufacturer agrees to buy it back. In this case, it was something very simple and the car has no mechanical issues lingering because of that. So it's a Lemon Law branded car, but still 
still a clean title good vehicle and that's how I was able to get it so cheap. Unfortunately though, it was damaged in transport. I was planning to take it to an off-road park before going up to the car wizards, but when I first got in it, it was giving me a low brake fluid warning and then the brake pedal was fading all the way to the floor. I took a look underneath and you can see, well, it is very wet on the front right side. You can see a little bit lingering there on the tire and that whole axle wet. What I believe happened is the shippers, they've wrapped a chain or something around that axle and got a brake line because it makes no sense for it to happen just now. Obviously, this is a very fresh new thing that I can't imagine the selling dealer would have sold to me that way. Very unsafe and it's probably an easy fix and just happened. So I can't drive it very far because it's losing brake fluid. It needs to go up to the wizard almost directly, but everything else on this silly evoke works, even though it does have some wear and tear. 85,000 miles is on the higher end of mileage for these, and that's another reason why it was so cheap. But it was a Florida car, and it's showing a lot of wear from the Florida sun, like this Range Rover has several different colors in the finish of the range. The paint itself does look pretty good, but it was driven by someone who curbed all four wheels, typical of Land Rover owners, especially driving around the city on Miami Beach or whatever, but the interior is in very nice shape. Now, when these came out 10 years ago, they did have the coupe version, so making a convertible, I guess, made sense, but obviously they sold a lot more of the five-door models, but the coupes and convertibles were not long for this world. The rear seat room is not very good. With the top down, I suppose it's usable, but uh, yeah, not much room, not very practical, but it's a convertible Land Rover, the Barbie dream Land Rover, and uh, I felt pretty cool pulling up to the house for the first time. All the construction workers were out there uh, working on the house, and they just started busting out laughing and started making fun of me because it does look uh, very ridiculous. And $70,000 for this does seem pretty silly considering the quality of the interior. In a full-out Range Rover, it looks a lot nicer than this, this plastic whatever stamping this is, looks really, really cheap. The vinyl dashboard is supposed to look like leather. It doesn't do a very good job of it. It does have heated seats and a heated steering wheel, which is nice, but overall, no. I just realized I did this entire intro and video with uh, my fly undone, so sorry about that. But yeah, $70,000 is just crazy. People would buy a Jeep Wrangler instead of this, and even in the used market, even though they're expensive. So there's enough of a market to demand that. The top is pretty neat how it folds down into the rear with the spoiler, and it does, it looks like a toy with the top down, and I guess that's something that I do like about it. In the transporter, it had something leak down on top of it. That's what all this is. It should clean up oil or whatever. One little ding on the rear quarter here that could be popped out and touched up, I suppose, but overall in very nice condition. And to give Land Rover some credit, even though this was their cheapy model, they do put a lot of off-road goodies and off-road cred into this thing. Pretty good skid plates. It can wade into really deep water. There's videos of these things getting water over their windshield. They have baffles for the intake to make sure it doesn't get into the engine. So the tech when it comes to off-road is pretty comparable to a full-size Range Rover. Neat in that sense. The infotainment and everything has aged pretty well considering this thing's going on eight or nine years old. See, we can change it to Grass, gravel, snow, mud ruts, sand. You have hill descent control, and you can see the infotainment is uh, pretty good. Apple CarPlay, 360 cameras, although they have aged a bit, so it looks like uh, drunk goggles, I suppose. So yeah, if you're very comfortable with your masculinity and want a convertible Land Rover, these things are still pretty viable, eight years old. The design doesn't look very dated, and the driving experience, well, it's not that bad, actually. Let's take it out. So my first driving impressions after the bad initial one with the brake pedal having its issue and the leak there was, this thing feels really cool and actually very fun to drive. Having a big convertible like this that's up high is just a very unique and cool experience. The sport seats, very comfortable. The ride, really nice. The power, I'm flooring it right now, not that good. The 2-liter turbo is 240-something horsepower and very much lacking. I do miss having a supercharged 5-liter V8, but that would be kind of ridiculous in one of these. Of course, car journalists thinking they're Formula One drivers want to complain about the handling and how much this thing sort of wallows in the turns and feels loose because it's a convertible, but who cares? It has a really nice, soft, easy ride. This is a great cruiser, and I'm really into that. The only part that I'm not into is when somebody sees me in this thing and I sort of 
have to hide because it is pretty embarrassing on the outside when you see yourself. If you can look at yourself in the mirror, uh, if you have any self-awareness, you realize how stupid you look. I'll put the window up so that'll help with the uh, noise as we go faster. But, you know, I'm willing to put up with looking like a complete moron. Looking like a discount store kin. Because this thing's pretty fun. Now, it's just a few miles from the hangar to Hoovy's Garage 3.0, so we can drive through there and do a little bit of mild off-roading, but I can't drive it any kind of distance. I'm just going to do that and then go straight to the Car Wizards. But I do want to see if this thing has got it, even though the tires are pretty bald on this thing. Obviously, my 1994 Jeep Wrangler would be a lot more capable, especially with its big off-road tires, but it is a rough driving experience. Very utilitarian, whereas this is a luxury car. It's a luxury experience, so it combines the best of both worlds. Maybe. Let's do a quick little drive through on the farm since there's a lot happening here. With the completed structure of Hoobie's Garage 3.0, the finishing has begun. You can look inside. Oh, we have obstacles. You're not laughing at me this time. <laughs> the Ken car. So they're building the storage utility room and then the mezzanine above it, a big platform. So about 20 by 20 for the upper area. And then it can be finished out with electrical and such. And this is the cool part, the old lean-to carport they're stripping to put on some newer siding. You can see there's some original wood there in white. If you look at the photo from 1956, it's old and white like that. But the coolest part going on right now has got to be over by the pond. Yeah, um, little light off-roading now. You can see when it was dug out originally to build up these berms over here, uh, the shape was very phallic, unfortunately. It was a, a penis shaped, and then it was also higher in the elevation to where we couldn't see the water in the narrow channel. And also, when I was out there trying to remove cattails with the Jeep and the winch, it wasn't very deep. So you can see the cattails that are still existing, what few are left. Uh, that was the maximum depth of the pond. So it needed to be dug out to where it wasn't a swamp forever. But you can probably see what I'm thinking here as far as an off-road test of this baby Range Rover. These low-profile wheels do make things a bit rougher. Let's see if it can conquer this little berm first. Oh, Jesus! Not bad! Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it was fine. Huh. That can be, that can be reattached. Uh, I'll just pop back in, no big deal. So moving on, let's see if we can get some vertical here. Unfortunately, there's some overgrowth that we're gonna have to mow down. It's trying. Will it stay? Whoa! That's pretty dang darn good. I think with a little speed it could make it. Decent sized ruts here from the six wheel dump truck. Whoa. Come on. Uh, I just realized I'm doing quite a bit of damage. This is the one that sucks because I'm not whistling diesel. This actually causes me pain. So but the Range Rover must have slid up on into the tree and yeah, caused some problems. And, uh, Oh. Skid plate's taking it like a champ, though. 
All right, I'm trying to find the easiest way to get down into this, which is now very deep. And, uh, shoot. This is not going to be easy. I guess this is my best chance. Here we go. I'm now in the bottom of my pond, which kind of looks like the surface of the moon. Huh, cool. All right. I do think this is probably the appropriate depth. Yes. Well, the question is, can we get back out? Hmm. All right, just send it a little bit here. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Come on. Yes! You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> it's mudding on bald tires. Whoa, that is awesome. Let's see if we can go back the other way. Yes. Whoa. Oh, come on. Come on, you're almost there. Ah. Yeah! Whoa! Yes! That convertible top actually saved me because I jumped a couple feet in the air. <laughs> okay, this thing is awesome. There's a really soupy bit right here. See what it does. I got a little bit too ambitious here. This is some deep, deep doo-doo. And somewhat, ah, uh, literally, because uh, the previous owner did tell me that a time or two he would uh, just let his septic tank drain into that. Oh no. Uh, oh dear. So I'm gonna have to get some help from these guys to get out and then get to the car wizards. Thank you so much for watching. Oh. oh no. <laughs> this is the biggest workout of my life, getting that cable on. I had to dig it out. All right, the front is freed from the mud. Come on. Nothing that can't be fixed, so. Let's get up to the car wizards.